Today we're looking at Civil War gunboats. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. The American Civil War saw many new military technologies developed with repeating rifles, hot air balloons, and even submarines. One of the most notable technological developments of the Civil War was the development of ironclad ships. Prior to the Civil War, basically all naval ships were simply large wooden ships with sails used to propel them. But with the development of steam-powered boats throughout the early to mid-1800s, this offered new opportunities for naval craft. The first ironclad ship was the CSS Manassas, developed by Confederate engineers. Soon after, the Confederates built the CSS Virginia, or Merrimack, which would famously battle the Union's first ironclad ship, the USS Monitor, at the Battle of Hampton Roads off the coast of Virginia in March of 1862. In the western theater of the war, where taking control of the Mississippi River was the Union's primary objective, new gunboats were developed that would be capable of navigating the river and attacking Confederate targets. These ships would be known as the city-class gunboats. In the early stages of the war, many commercial riverboats were designated to be used for military campaigns. However, these riverboats were designed to carry cargo or passengers and were not designed to be used in military engagements. As the war began, James Eads, who was an engineer and inventor, offered his services to the Union to develop a new kind of ship to be used on the rivers. Eads consulted with Union Admiral John Rogers, and together they decided they needed a ship with armor strong enough to withstand artillery attacks, also with enough power to be able to travel against the current of the rivers that they would be navigating, and also have a shallow draft. And by that, I mean the depth that the boat sets in the water. A shallow draft was necessary because many points along the river would require navigating shallow waters. Eads called on fellow engineer Samuel Polk, and together they developed a design and began the construction of six gunboats at St. Louis, Missouri. By January of 1862, all six boats were completed. The boats were each 175 feet long with two and a half inch thick iron plating weighing 75 tons. The sides of the gunboats were angled to deflect gunfire and minimize the chance of a direct hit. Additionally, the ships had 13 guns, three on the front, four on each side, and two on the back. To many onlookers, the boats looked odd in the water, almost like a turtle swimming with its shell out. So the boats earned the nickname Poke Turtles. The gunboats were all officially named after cities along the Mississippi and its tributaries. They included the USS Carolette, Cincinnati, Louisville, Mound City, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and then behind me, you see the USS Cairo, which was sunk in the Yazoo River in December of 1862, and today is on display at the Vicksburg Military Park. The boats were part of the Union's Western Gunboat Flotilla and would first see action at the Battle of Fort Henry on February 6th of 1862 on the Tennessee River. Then shortly after, they aided in the attack on Fort Donaldson, providing support to Ulysses S. Grant and Union ground forces as they successfully captured the fort. The gunboats then became part of the campaign to capture the Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River at Vicksburg, Mississippi. The boats were sent out on several reconnaissance missions along the river and its tributaries, attempting to find a pathway to Vicksburg and weaken Confederate defenses. Eventually, General Grant decided that his troops and supporting naval vessels needed to get south of Vicksburg in order to attack. On the night of April 16, 1863, several gunboats and three empty troop transports ran the gauntlet past Vicksburg's big guns. Now Grant was able to move his army against Vicksburg from the south. The gunboats then supported the Union campaign to capture the city by shelling Vicksburg. After a 47-day siege on July 3, 1863, Vicksburg surrendered. Grant considered the support of Union gunboats vital to the victory. Simultaneously, further down the river, Union troops were attacking Port Hudson, Louisiana, where again gunboats provided support for attacking the Confederate position. On July 9th of 1863, Port Hudson surrendered, giving the Union full control of the Mississippi River. A few days later, the gunboat USS St. Louis was sunk when hit by two Confederate torpedoes. After the capture of the Mississippi River, the remaining gunboats were involved in the Red River Campaign, but for the most part, fighting along the river was over. After the war was over, the gunboats were sold for salvage parts. 
Although the era of the Civil War armored gunboat was relatively brief, their contribution to the war effort and ultimate Union victory was very important, and their development and design would be an important step in the development of warships in the future. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.